It's big time, man. Like, from seeing all these vendors out here to all the people out here. I mean, it's hot outside, but there's heat in here. Man, just, just as the vendors were all setting up, I just felt... I felt a little anxiety because I felt like the heat and I also saw everybody yeah. just continuously bringing shoes in and I, I started getting really excited for this event, man. Like, I already see it becoming a pack house and we still got more people coming in as is, we speak. Yeah, man, like I've been walking around, we're kind of doing our videos and checking out, but it's like a really like family feel, man. Like everybody's very like- That's Texas, Very baby. like talking to you, make sure there's, you know, they see, I didn't even know who people who thought who knew who I was, but it's great, man. That's Texas, man, that's the love. So real quick, let's just talk about SneakerCon, man. Yes, 10 sir. years, this is the first flyer for the first ever event that we did. And of course it was in Times Square in New York City. So we went with this whole Playbill type of vibe for the, for the flyers. And I was out there, man. I was out there on Times Square handing out flyers. And it was a small, we were, it was in a comedy club in Times Square. You know those comedy clubs? Have you ever been to New York? Times Square, and they selling, they trying to sell you the tickets. Yeah. They trying to sell you a ticket with a drink, and you got to get a drink at the spot, and you could be there watching the comedy club. So it was in one of these clubs, and we were actually in the hallway. All we had was the hallway to this comedy club with 20 vendor tables. And man, when I tell you uh, we were handing out flyers, these flyers all over Soho, Times Square, 34th Street, and we got 800 people to come out and line up. And in Times Square, you had 800 sneakerheads lined up, man, th on this day. Admission was only $10 back then, and that was the start of it, man. That was SneakerCon 10 years ago, and since then, I'm going to just, because I could keep going all day on all the events we've done, but I'm going to just talk about Dallas. Woo. This is the fourth Dallas event. We did two. Uh, we started in, what, 2016, 2017. That was at the Irving uh, Convention Center, and now, of course, we're here in the Dallas Market Center. Came here last year for the first time. We love it so much. We're back for a two-day event. So Dallas, we will be continuing to come here. We love the culture here. We love what we're seeing today. And man, we're just kicking it off. Two days of this. If you see us, holla at us. We're here to meet and greet and, and show love, man. We're here to, to make sure everybody's buying legit shoes, that everybody's legit selling what they brought and leaving happy with either some new sneakers for their feet or some cash in their pocket. So man, that was a quick little intro to this sneaker con event. We're getting ready to start off on the first panel discussion, which is social media versus the sneaker community. Versus the sneaker community, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm step off stage. Sure. You can introduce the guys that are gonna be Let's with us go. for that panel. I'm gonna get the the, Thanks, the screen popping for that. Right, so bro. I'm gonna see you, you guys later for some panels too, legit talks and a couple extra panels that I'll be on. Make so. sure you get your legit check back there on the left corner. So first, uh, the first one we're gonna do is gonna be. Is it on? It's on. Yes, sir. You? You? Garrett? Woo! Where the Retro 14's at, man? I know we in the building, man. How everybody feeling, man? Oh, y'all quiet. So how everybody feeling, man? Let's get it, man. All right, so before we get started, I just want to say happy birthday to uh, Flight Academy Kicks. Happy birthday to Jumperman Chris. It's their birthday weekend, so thank you guys for being up here for your birthday weekend. So, all right, guys, you ready? Hello, hello, hello. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead, take it quick. All right, so, guys, we're going to be talking about social media and the sneaker community, right? Okay. So, social media is big right now, right? Every, All the information you get, everything from sneakers to apparel, everything is on there. So, I'm going to go down and ask each of you a question. Since you guys are big on social media, how has social media helped the sneaker community? Whoever wants to go... I mean, how, did, how has it helped your brand in general, right? And we're just gonna go down each one, just kind of talk about it, give a little details, and then we're gonna, a few extra questions. You uh, I mean, it definitely helped tremendously. Yeah, like, if it wasn't for social media, I definitely wouldn't be here by any means. Sorry I lost my voice, it was my birthday yesterday. Um, definitely, social media has definitely helped out, especially as influencing, uh, the way how we use on YouTube, Instagram, so on and so forth, just so connecting all the people and connecting the community as well. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I think with with social media, man, it really it really opened up a lot of opportunities for us, man. Like you know, because of social media, we're able to get on this platform and be able to, to talk and you know, just because of the passion we got for sneakers, man. Social media opened that door for us, man. Like you look at all the big companies now, like 
they may, they mainly do advertisement on social media. That's where everybody at. Like everybody eyes are on social media. There's not a day that a person's not on Facebook. There's not a day that a person's not on YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is. So it really just built that platform. And for some people, it solidified them as well. Right? Um, at least for me, social media has been a big part. And I know we got a lot of people out here who are, you know, just starting a YouTube channel or just starting out on Instagram. I feel like as far as social media goes, you need Instagram and YouTube as far as to build a huge following. At least that's what I did. Um, for those who've been following me for a long time, I first started out on Instagram and then I trans then I transitioned over to YouTube. So that's like a dynamic duo. So without Instagram for me, my YouTube wouldn't be as big and without my YouTube, my Instagram wouldn't be as big. So to be honest, you need both. So do you think, since you, you were big on both right now, right? Yeah. You're 100K on IG, 123, 25 on YouTube, something that's like nice. that. So do you feel that you have to figure out content for both? And like, is it one better than the other for you? Is What what, what is it doing when it comes to sneaker content for you? Um, both of them is like a job. Uh, of course, you know, with YouTube, YouTube is more in depth. As far as my Instagram goes, I just try to at least, you know, keep everybody updated as far as like sneaker releases, um, sneaker drops, things of that nature. But like I said, you definitely need both. So Flight, what do you think about when it comes to the YouTube part and now that IG is doing more of IGTV, right? Do you feel that people are gonna eventually step away and be all, it's easier for them to be on one platform than to go on two separate? Or, because I mean, you're still getting the, the ads and all that, right? So what do you guys think about that? Um, and same question for you after that, Chris. I think, for me, I think it, I don't think it's really gonna have an effect on, you know, people, they either gonna watch it on the IGTV or they gonna watch it on YouTube, and some people may just watch it on both of them. Some people are on one platform more than the other. So I think it really opens up for us to be able to reach even more people. So somebody who really don't have a YouTube account or don't really want to jump on YouTube, but they got an IG, they can just click on and watch the same video on IG and YouTube. So it's just more, it's just another channel for us to get the uh, content out. Chris, same question. Do you feel that now with IGTV like popping off, do you feel that it's gonna be easier for these people to stay on one platform or, or do you think they're still gonna try to figure out three different I mean, I still think it's still a separate platform. I mean, YouTube is its own little channel. And people actually watch YouTube more than they actually watch TV nowadays. IG is just another social media platform, like a Facebook, like something for social media to get to. But I feel like YouTube is a little different. It's a little more, like not everybody's on YouTube. Everybody's on Instagram. It's personal, business, so on and so forth. But YouTube is more of just YouTube. So the next question is for all three of you guys again, right? So. How can, we talked about the positive parts of it, right? So how can social media be negative? Because I know there's, oh, <laughs> so there's negativity all around, right? So like, again, I mean, there's stuff going on, all that. So what is the negative part about social media in general? It doesn't have to be, you know, one subject. Just what do you feel is negative about that? Can I stand up and preach? Go ahead, man. <laughs> I'm breaking I mean, up I, this. I mean, I got the preacher town, man, you know. But ah, uh, man, I mean, it's, it's negativity everywhere, you know, and I feel like when it comes to social media, a lot of people are able to, you know, be somebody that, you know, they can technically like have behind a computer or type what they want to type and, you know, things of that nature, man. So I just feel like the energy may be different, like up close and personal, yeah, that's you true. know, but I just feel like when it comes to social media, I feel like people feel like they have the, the gall to just say whatever they want to say, whenever they want to say. Um, and they feel like there's no repercussions. Um, I mean, but when, when, whenever somebody's doing something good or something positive, nothing in the world is gonna be 100% positive. One thing I learned from my big bro, Fineline, he said, you're never gonna win against the internet. The internet is always gonna be undefeated. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you just gotta either, you gonna roll with the punches, you gonna do something, or you just gonna keep it moving and hit 124K. Almost, you know you're almost saying? there. One of the two. There we go. <laughs> oh, now, good light. Like, same, thing, same question for you, like, what is the negativity part of it? Like, how do you feel about dealing with, like, how do you guys deal with, like, the comments? Is it something that you look at it and be like, okay, this is what I gotta fix? Or do you guys just kind of just look over no, that? For me, like, I don't, like, this is the thing, right? Like, when it, <laughs> I gotta hold Talk it back so, sometimes. So when it comes, when it comes to people, <laughs> so when it comes to people making comments and trolling on the internet, I'm cool with all that. It doesn't affect me because the thing is, a lot of people, say what they want behind the screen or they type the keyboard but it's different when you got to touch my flesh or when you see me in person 
you gotta keep that same energy. You better know how to work. But can I be can I be honest with you guys? Like people don't realize how humble and chill you guys are yeah. until they I mean we talked online a lot. Yeah. Finally meeting you guys up in person. It's different than seeing like so that's why I feel like these people online and stuff will see like, hey, okay, yeah, they, they got a good collection, they got this. But until they meet you in person, it's a whole nother story. Yeah. And that's where it comes from, man. It's a lot of people that troll just they don't they don't know you. And some people trolling you makes them feel better about themselves. So sometimes you gotta give people that. And if this is what you need to feel validated, you can have that. Because I understand my value and purpose. Chris, go ahead. There's, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there. And I mean, trolling, trolling, honestly, I just, I, I'm kind of numb to it now. I get it all the time. You're Asian, you're chink, whatever, blah, blah. You're short, whatever. <laughs> Not that short. But, but the thing honestly, is, but like, the thing is but, with the negativity, I'm sorry, Chris. But with the negativity, like you get numb to it after a while and it actually helps you in life because once I work as customer service at my real job and when they get at me, I'm like, all right, whatevs. Like I'm always so used to that backlash. But honestly, it's just, if you let the negativity take over you, then it, you know, you're going to get into a darker space. You're not going to be yourself. See, the so, thing is, when you got a bag to protect, and you got a bag to protect, you're going to have to do whatever you're going to do to keep your bag secure. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got a bag and somebody else may not have a bag, so they're going to try to take yours. But, man, once you focus, man, you focus. All right, so the next question is more like social media, but when it comes to your guys' collection, right? Uh, what's the hardest part of being a collector and being an influencer online? Like, how does it... No, because, I mean, like, you have to think about it. Like, there's a lot of shoes that come out every time. That's that's content, right? So how hard is that for you guys, like, to keep up and... I mean, right? it's... You know, you oh, sorry. Can the Asian go first? Um, go ahead. I mean, I'm always already called the hype beast. So it is what it is. I guess, I mean, you, as a YouTuber, you kind of have to get daily content in if Maybe you don't want it. I try not to. Like, I just go to Stowe and be like, yo, this is dope if you want it. But, I mean, there's always another way to make content without buying. I've learned that with my pocket. So, but I still try to get what I want. And if it's hype, it's hype. But, yeah. All right. For me, I just feel like you got to keep the balance, man. Like, um, like, for me, I like, I like different types of shoes. Like, everybody know I like retro 14s. That's not a favorite silhouette for a lot of people. But, for me, I'll bring the, the, the dope reviews for shoes that's about to drop. But also, if it's something I don't like, then I just don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I feel like when it comes to sneakers, everybody is different. You should be allowed to have your opinion. If somebody like Jordan Mids more than like Jordan Highs, everybody don't agree with that, but that's their opinion. That's their style. So that's now, would you, would you still, per for example, like you say, if certain ones that you don't like, would you still purchase them for sake of content or would you just like stick to yeah. something that you like I, 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 was, you? I was still <laughs> that's a whole other topic hey, listen, I, will, I will still purchase them because people are tuning in to me to bring that content so that's what i signed up for so you when you sign up to be a uh, sneaker youtuber you understand that before somebody gets the sneakers they want to see what they look like in here they trust your opinion so they want to see what you think about it so you still have to go ahead and cop the shoe and if you don't like it just sell it later but still bring there's the always a receipt too so just so do you, do you feel like do you guys feel a lot of the people who are doing these reviews that are up and coming is that what you think they're doing is just like purchasing them doing the review returning them is that is that what's going on I, I mean, I, no. excuse me i wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say that there's a lot of shoes that i review that i don't like y'all know i hate jordan 11 loads i absolutely hate that shoe but you know for and for the you know the army and the people who want to see it i will still go out and purchase it a lot of stuff i get early so i'm paying more to do that early review but it's all for you know the people who actually support you and the people who actually watch your channel so i do it all the time so now for these up and coming uh like sneaker youtubers is there anything that you could tell them like hey like for example if somebody does say something negative like and it, they take it to heart like what do, what is something that you guys could tell them like hey look over it or I mean, for anybody that's up and coming, I always tell them, like, it's a lot of people in here that I've known for a long time. And um, when they call me and they ask me for advice, I just tell them, you know, just stay consistent. Consistency is key. The moment that you let somebody negative affect how you doing, like if they say, oh, I hate Jordan 1s, and you never review another Jordan 1 on your channel, they won. You know what I'm saying? So it's just keep doing you. That's the main thing. There's so many different lanes of sneaking YouTube, especially now. You know what I'm saying? It's... You got the good side of sneaky YouTube, you got the bad side of sneaky YouTube. But I just say, as long as you find your medium, you find your common ground, you should be good. At least for me, like, doing the early reviews, that was my thing. You know, showing my collection, that was my thing. 
You know, but it may not be the thing for uh, He Got Kicks. It may not be the thing for Snapper Jones or The Vintage. You know what I'm saying? So they need to find their own common ground. And once you find your niche, that's when you know that you're good. You know? Um, what's you good? So, what, for the new audience, oh, like, for up and coming like sneaker YouTubers, like what would you, when it comes to like the negativity and stuff like, oh, yeah. what do you, what do you feel? This is my thing, man. You can't pay attention to it. Like you really, when, if you're gonna do sneaker YouTube and you're gonna put yourself under that microscope and in that spotlight, you can't be worried about what people say. You know what I'm saying? Then you gotta be strong hearted because it's gonna be people that just comments or words, words don't affect you. Sometimes you gotta look at it and they be like, all right, cool. And sometimes, honestly, sometimes people may make a negative comment, but they may be telling the truth. And it may be, you know, you may look at it and be like, you know what? It might be right. I might, I might do need to evaluate that. Maybe I do need to switch this up to bring a better content, man. But you gotta be strong hearted. Chris? Well, with negativity, I mean, like I said earlier, it's the way how you look at it. Maybe it's uh, constructive criticism, which is fine. I do that all the time. But all in all, I think just don't get it too much into your head because it will take you to another dark place. And just be you. All right, so question for you, uh, Bray. The Jordan ones that came out today, right? And there was a hype a little bit, right? I, don't know, I think they sold out on sneakers. I saw some Instagram that they were selling like there's people Only small up. sizes. So what do you think with that? Like how do you feel like with the new colorway? Like you know, I mean I don't. I mean again I don't feel like the quality was on 100. percent It's just a colorway. So what, why do you think that built a hype like that? I mean look at the colorway. The colorway is black, white, and red. Pretty much any Jordan one that's black, white, and red does numbers. Bretos did numbers. Chicago's does numbers. Uh, Brands does numbers. So anything with that. Those in the note, uh, uh, my man's got them right here. Yeah. So honestly, when he threw them, I thought it was enough for resales. I it's honestly, cool. I honestly thought that Very that close. shoe would do more because a lot of people like to call a shoe a poor man. I don't like to use that terminology, but um, that shoe is, you know, the second best thing to a not for resale. If you don't have the six, seven hundred dollars to pay for a not for resale, you just go ahead and pay that one sixty for those. Now, like my man Jumpman Chris, he's gonna have trouble because. Pretty much any Jordan one in that size seven and a half through nine is gonna be trouble. So we took that what hour drive to make sure that he got his shoe because he would pay like two sixty. He would have paid that two sixty. So you know, thanks for the smoothie also. But you know, we would have paid all that. the Asian people for comping all the small sizes. We, we would have paid that two sixty. But I still think that that's a cop. I think in a year or so, or even around Christmas time, a lot of people gonna regret not grabbing that shoe for real. That's gonna be, I think, one of the top customized shoes yeah, easily. in the next few months. Easily. Why? What do you think? Um, Why do you think that hat built a hype? I mean, like he's pretty much said, the colorway is on it, man. And what that shoe actually resembles of a, a release that already came out, man. Um, but I, mean, I, me, I think the shoe dope, man. Like, I, I, I think it's fine, bro. I, I like it a lot, man. Why you, know, you ain't bad then? Chris, is there anything, this, this would you change about that? It's not even about you. It's, not. It, it's, a bl it's black. No, would you change anything about that shoe in general, like with that release? I, I wish it wasn't as shiny as it was. That's the only thing. But then it would be too much like the non for resales, I guess. I know Jordan Brand's doing something different with these ones lately. Have you seen the shit on Backboard 3.0s? I think, I think with the Jordan one, Jordan Brand is trying to test out the next big thing. And that's what they're doing that's with exactly social media. They're, they're blasting it all over the place. And because with the shadow backboard, with the leather on the shadow backboard, that was, that, was, that was the next thing. They threw that leather on everything. So we're going to try to see if the hyper, uh, hyper crimsons or the crimson tints and uh, um, what was the other blue ones? Turbo green. The turbo greens. We're going to see if you know, by us putting this kind of leather on the shoe, if it's gonna be a big thing. And if it is a big thing, we gonna keep rolling with it. Okay, it wasn't a big thing. We gonna do the shadow backboard 3.0. If it's a big thing, it's gonna be on the bread colorway. It's gonna be on the shadow colorway. It's gonna be on the royal colorway. The nose ring don't lie. Y'all, if y'all know about my nose ring, the nose ring don't lie. So if the shadow backboards do something, the 3.0s, it will be a bread shadow backboard like that. It will be a royal one like that. So that's just my prediction. The nose ring don't lie. Trust in the nose ring. Yeah. Trust. Me. All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, thank you guys for coming. We got a Thanks bunch so of heavy hitters coming today, guys. Make sure it's going to be pretty much on every hour on the hour. We're actually going to be doing trivia throughout the show. So we got some cool people coming up for the trivia. I just want to thank you guys for coming up. Stay tuned in the next five. In 10 minutes, we're going to start the trivia, all right, guys? That we're going to be busting, though. Again. Give us some stuff away. We're going to be giving some that stuff away. Cool. I want to make sure you guys are here for that. All right, guys, thank you very much. Hey. Shout out to SneakerCon Dallas. Dallas is always a good city.
me. Coming from the bottom, moving straight to the top. Coming with the put up for the number one spot. Pushing my rap, jacket, push out on the block. Holding my ground, soccer rappers get lost.